Hey there, Marshall here. In today's video, we're stepping back in time to explore the fascinating world of music on the move that preceded the iconic Sony Walkman. So if you're ready to rediscover the audio innovations of yesteryears, then crank the volume up and stay tuned. Westinghouse Portable Radio Back in the day, the Westinghouse Portable Radio was the bee's knees when it came to enjoying music on the go. You see, in the mid-20th century, we didn't have all these fancy digital devices we have today. If you wanted to listen to music while you were out and about, you had to rely on good old analog technology. The Westinghouse Portable Radio was a real marvel. It was compact and lightweight, which made it easy to carry around. It had a rugged and durable construction that could handle a little rough and tumble, perfect for folks like me who like to take their tunes outdoors. It was powered by a battery, so you didn't need to be near a power outlet to enjoy your favorite songs. One of the standout features of the Westinghouse Portable Radio was its AM-FM tuning. You could switch between different radio stations to listen to your preferred music or catch the latest news and sports updates. And let me tell you, back then, radio was the main source of entertainment and information. No streaming devices, no downloads, just pure radio waves. The sound quality wasn't like what you get with today's high-end headphones, but it was good enough to get your toes tapping. The built-in speaker had a certain charm to it. You could even plug in a set of headphones if you wanted a more personal listening experience. Of course, there were limitations. You were at the mercy of the radio station's programming, and you couldn't skip songs or create your own playlists. But there was a certain magic in discovering new music by chance and feeling connected to the world through the airwaves. And it more than made up for its shortcomings. Crosley Portable Clock Radio Ah, the Crosley Portable Clock Radio is it brought its own unique twist to the table, setting it apart from the Westinghouse Portable Radio. One of the most distinctive features of the Crosley Portable Clock Radio was, as the name suggests, the built-in clock. Yeah, this was a nifty addition because it made the device a two-in-one wonder you could wake up to your favorite radio station playing your morning tunes. Imagine that. No more annoying alarm bells or buzzers, just the annoying blabber of your local DJ. The clock itself was typically a adorned with those flip-style numbers, giving it a classic look that many folks adored. It added a touch of style and practicality to the device, making it a must-have for bedrooms and nightstands. Sound quality on the Crosley Portable Clock Radio was quite decent for its time, and it usually had a built-in speaker. You could still switch between AM and FM stations to enjoy your music or catch the latest news, just like with Westinghouse. And of course, there was the headphone jack for those moments when you wanted your music to yourself. Now, while the Westinghouse was all about simplicity and ruggedness, the Crosley Portable Clock Radio leaned more towards aesthetics and functionality. It had a sleek and compact design, often coming in various colors and finishes to match your personal style. The Crosley Radio also embraced new technologies of its time, such as transistor radios, which made it more energy efficient and reliable. It used smaller batteries and had improved reception, which was a big deal for folks who wanted to take their music with them on the go. The Crosley Portable Clock Radio offered a more stylish and multifunctional experience compared to the Westinghouse portable radio. It brought a touch of elegance to the world of portable radios while still delivering that same old-school radio magic we all loved. It's a piece of nostalgia that many of us old-timers hold dear right alongside the trusty Westinghouse. Luxtone Portable Transistor Radios Ah, the Luxtone Portable Transistor Radios. Now, there's another blast from the past. These little devices were a huge step forward in the evolution of portable radios and brought a slow slew of innovations that set them apart from their predecessors. One of the most significant advancements with Luxtone transistor radios was, as the name suggests, the use of transistors instead of vacuum tubes. This made the radios much smaller, more energy efficient, and far more reliable. The days of carrying around a bulky radio were over. These transistor radios were compact, lightweight, and could easily slip into a pocket or bag. Luxtone radios also typically boasted excellent battery life. The switch from vacuum tubes to transistors meant that these radios consumed far less power, allowing you to enjoy your music for extended periods without constantly replacing batteries. 
That was a game changer for people on the move. Another notable feature was improved reception and sound quality. Luxtone radios offered clear and crisp audio and the reception was often outstanding, even in areas with weak signals. This was a real game changer for travelers and outdoor enthusiasts who could now enjoy their music in more remote locations. Luxtone radios were also known for their sleek and stylish designs, often with chrome or metallic finishes that exuded a sense of modernity and sophistication. They were available in various colors, catering to personal style preferences, and many featured built-in antennas for better signal reception. Like their predecessors, Luxtone transistor radios still allowed you to switch between AM and FM stations, and they usually had a headphone jack for a more personal listening experience. These radios bridged the gap between the analog and digital eras, setting the stage for the rise of portable music players and eventually the Walkman. GE Blue Max Radio. General Electric's Blue Max Radio was something straight out of a science fiction movie in its time. It was a real head turner and stood out in a crowd of portable radios for several reasons. See, the Blue Max's design was ahead of its time. It had a sleek space age appearance with a futuristic look that seemed like it came from a different dimension or your local police office. Seriously, this one looked looked exactly like a police siren and that was what made it a visual delight. The radio was the embodiment of modernity and owning one was a statement of style and forward thinking. The Blue Max was known for its cutting edge features and one of the most remarkable was its digital tuning. Instead of the traditional analog dials and knobs found on most radios, the Blue Max had its stations wrapped around the light, letting us precisely tune in to our favorite stations with precision. The sound quality was also a standout feature. The Blue Max often featured high-quality speakers that delivered crisp and clear audio, making the listening experience a joy. It was designed to take advantage of the latest advancements in speaker technology and acoustic design. The Blue Max futuristic radio was a symbol of progress and innovation during its heyday, representing the transition from traditional analog radios to the digital age. It appealed to those who wanted a taste of the future in their every day lives and its striking design and advanced features set it apart from the more traditional radios of its time. Owning a Blue Max was not just about enjoying music, it was about being a part of the future. Those who had one of these radios were indeed ahead of their time. Multiband radio. Multiband radios, also known as multiband receivers or multiband transceivers, are a type of radio receiver that can tune in to a wide range of frequencies or bands, allowing users to access various types of radio signals beyond the standard AM and FM broadcasts. These radios have a fascinating history that traces back to the early days of radio technology. The inception of multiband radios can be linked to the evolution of radio technology itself. In the early 20th century, the first radio receivers were primarily designed to receive amplitude modulation broadcasts. These early radios were relatively simple and could only tune in to a limited range of frequencies. As radio technology progressed, these receivers became more versatile and some could receive multiple AM bands. Shortwave radio broadcasts gained popularity in the 1920s due to their long distance capabilities. This led to the development of radios that could tune in to these shortwave frequencies in addition to standard AM bands. Shortwave radios became essential for global communication, enabling listeners to hear broadcasts from around the world. During World War II, military and amateur radio operators used multiband radios for communication. These radios could cover a broad range of frequencies, including shortwave, very high frequency VHF, and ultra high frequency UHF bands. The war effort drove significant advancements in radio technology. After World War II, multiband radios became more accessible to consumers. Manufacturers produced portable multiband radios that covered AM, FM, and shortwave bands, catering to a diverse range of listeners. These radios allowed users to switch between different frequency bands for entertainment and information. As technology advanced, multiband radios evolved further. They integrated features like single sideband reception for improved shortwave communication, digital displays, and even 
even digital signal processing for enhanced signal quality and tuning precision. Some modern multiband radios can also receive digital broadcasts that are designed for amateur radio enthusiasts and emergency communication. Today, multiband radios are still widely used by hobbyists, shortwave listeners, amateur radio operators, and outdoor enthusiasts. They provide access to a wide array of radio signals, including AM and FM broadcasts, shortwave, weather, marine, aviation, and more. Their continued popularity is a testament to their versatility and ability to connect people with information, entertainment, and occasionally music from around the world. We interrupt this broadcast to tell you to give this video a like, and don't tune out of this station, things are about to get fishy, and trust me, you're going to want to hear about it. Charlie the Tuna Charlie the Tuna is a unique and collectible transistor radio model from the mid-20th century. This radio was produced by the Royal Light Corporation, and its design was inspired by the popular advertising mascot Charlie the Tuna from the Starkist Tuna. The Charlie the Tuna transistor radio featured a distinctive and playful design that resembled the character Charlie the Tuna, who was known for his role in Starkist Tuna's advertising campaigns. The radio's design typically included Charlie's trademark beret, sunglasses, and a cheerful smiling face on the front of the radio. This unique design made it instantly recognizable and appealed to consumers who appreciated its whimsical charm. The Charlie the Tuna transistor radio is considered a highly collectible item among radio enthusiasts and collectors of advertising memorabilia. Its unique design and association with a well-known advertising character have contributed to its desirability among collectors of vintage electronics and pop culture artifacts. R2-D2 AM Radio The R2-D2 AM Radio is a delightful piece of memorabilia for Star Wars fans and radio enthusiasts alike. This radio is designed in the likeness of the iconic astromech droid R2-D2 from the Star Wars franchise. The R2-D2 AM Radio faithfully replicates the appearance of R2-D2, complete with the droid's distinctive blue and white color scheme and various details that mimic the on-screen character. It features a speaker grill where R2-D2's eye would be, and the control knobs and switches are integrated into the droid's design elements, making them look like authentic parts of the droid. Despite its playful appearance, the R2-D2 AM radio is a functional AM radio. It can tune in to standard AM radio broadcasts, allowing users to listen to music, news, and other programs. It's a portable radio typically powered by batteries, making it convenient for on-the-go listening. The R2-D2 AM radio is highly sought after by both Star Wars collectors and vintage radio enthusiasts. Its unique design, association with the beloved R2-D2 character, and connection to the cultural phenomenon of Star Wars contribute to its collectible value. Many fans of the franchise appreciate having this piece as part of their Star Wars memorabilia collections. This radio is a beautiful example of how pop culture and entertainment franchises have influenced consumer products. It blends the worlds of technology and entertainment, allowing fans to enjoy their favorite radio stations with a touch of sci-fi goodness. Boombox. Boomboxes are also known as ghetto blasters or jam boxes and are iconic portable audio devices that gained immense popularity in the 1970s and 80s. These large boxy and powerful music players were a significant part of pop culture and had a profound impact on the music and street culture of the era. Boomboxes typically featured a rectangular design with large speakers on either side and a central cassette tape deck. They often had radio tuners, equalizer controls, and multiple audio inputs. The prominent carry handle made them easy to transport. What set boomboxes apart was their size and sound quality. They were designed to be portable but still packed a punch when it came to sound. The powerful amplifiers and large speakers could produce loud, bass-heavy music, making them ideal for parties, gatherings, and even street performances. Boomboxes were closely associated with cassette tapes. The built-in tape decks allowed users to play music from cassettes, record mixtapes, or even record songs from the radio. This made them central to the mixtape culture of the time. Boomboxes became symbols of urban street culture. 
Particularly in the hip-hop and breakdancing scenes, they were often carried on shoulders and played music in public spaces, contributing to the development of hip-hop as a cultural movement. Over the years, boomboxes incorporated various technological advancements such as dual cassette decks for dubbing tapes, CD players, and even early versions of digital audio players. Some models even had graphic equalizers and detachable speakers. With the rise of personal portable audio devices like the Sony Walkman and later digital music players, the popularity of boomboxes waned in the late 1980s and 1990s. However, they never disappeared entirely and experienced a resurgence in the late 2010s, with some manufacturers creating modern versions that combined vintage aesthetics with modern technology. And there you have it, your options for music on the go before the arrival of the Walkman. Did you own any of them before getting your hands on Sony's masterpiece? Tell us about it in the comments section below. And if you like the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.